So, in this video, I want to compare the Lewis LH4 brakes to the Lewis LH4 titanium brakes. I've got my e-bike, I've got my enduro bike, and they've both got Lewis brakes on. I've been using them now for a couple of months, and I get a lot of questions about these brakes from people asking, are they worth buying? How powerful are they? What do they feel like? All sorts of questions. So I want to add to all them, give you a comparison between the two brakes, give you my personal opinion on them. So if you are thinking about getting them, you know which ones to get. All right, so we'll first take a look at the LH4 brakes. So I've got these on my enduro bike. Let's just take a look at some of the specs and the tech stuff, and then I'll give you my opinion on them. So I've got them in the silver color, braided hoses. I think they look absolutely boss. They have four pot pistons or calipers. So we've got two 17 mil pistons and two 14 mil pistons, which is slightly different than the LH4 titaniums, which I'll explain in a second. Pistons are made of stainless steel, so they get rid of heat pretty decently. I'm currently running metallic pads in these. Rotors, I'm currently running 200 mil rotors front and rear, which have been really powerful so far. Plenty of stopping power, haven't overheated one bit. Now, if we take a look at the specifics of the lever. So on the LH4s, we have this two-in-one lever reach and bite adjuster on here, which is a really cool touch. Obviously got braided hoses, a very clean looking CNC brake. Uh, with that signature Lewis brake like feel to the lever. And one thing you'll notice across all these brakes that I've, that I've used so far is the feel quality. You know, sometimes when you just feel a component or a brake or anything and you can just tell whether it's good or not. Like these actually feel quite pleasant to pull and use. Like it's quite satisfying just feeling the lever, feeling the quality of the product. Now, when I first got these brakes, they came in a box and I had to internally route them through the frame because all my cables are all inside the frame. That was obviously a bit of a hassle as with any internal routing is. And then I actually had to re-bleed the brake just so I could get the lever feeling exactly how I wanted them. The bleeding process is really straightforward. It's just basically two syringes or one syringe and the cap on the top of the, the reservoir. So you just push fluid through from the bottom up to the top. Can't really go wrong. And they also have a really cool top cap for bleeding as well, which I'll put a picture on here, which I think is really funky. They've gone above and beyond on even just creating these little small parts and accessories. Just some more details on here. A nice bearing in the lever. The dog's currently playing with the stones. Uh, they also come in all sorts of different colors, which I'll put on the screen now, so you can see the different color options that you can get. So you can fully customize the look of your bikes. And then we'll just take a look now at the caliper. The caliper and that's the 200 mil Lewis rotor on there. Very nice. So we've got two 17 and two 40 mil pistons, metallic pads, braided hose, and then the front. I think they look really, really smart. Okay, so now let's take a look at the LH4 titaniums. So these brakes I currently have on my e-bike. I've got them in this nice black color with gold titanium bolts, which looks really, really trick. Again, we've got braided hoses on here for a nice finish. These brakes are a little bit different than the LH4s, and I'll explain why in a second, because we have a number of different adjustments going on here. So we've obviously got this two-in-one uh, lever reach and bite adjuster on there, same as the LH4s. We also have the lever ratio adjuster on here as well. The LH4 doesn't have this, but the LH4 teams do. And the best way for me to describe what the lever ratio adjuster does is it enables you to adjust the feel of the lever. So you can have a softer or harder feel to your lever. The best way to explain this in simple terms is if you use a Shimano brake, for example, or a SRAM brake or a Mugora brake or any other type of brands out there, the lever actually feels different in terms of like how it how it bites the pad. Shimano, I've used those through and through for years, very bitey brake. SRAM, it's a little softer to the touch, in my opinion. This lever ratio adjuster is adjusted by a small Torx key in here. You can actually adjust how your lever feels. For example, if you like certain characteristics of a Shimano brake, but you don't like some things on it, and you prefer another characteristic of a SRAM brake, for example, like the modulation of the brake, you can essentially personalize and customize these brakes specifically how you like a brake to feel. That's the best way I can describe it. And it's just a, a simple adjustment in here, and then it has a, a little gauge that you can use to have a play around with and get the lever feeling exactly how you want it to feel. They also have the anti-leak system on here as well, which is something that the LH4 brakes doesn't have. This is really cool because if you are somebody who doesn't like bleeding brakes or doesn't want the hassle of bleeding brakes, especially as well if you have internally rooted cables on a, on a bike like this, 
you can route the cables through the frame and the LA a and the ALS anti-leak system means that you can literally disconnect and reconnect the cables without losing any air or oil whatsoever. I don't know how it works, I don't know how it does it, it sounds to me like magic, but that to me is a great benefit. So this is the caliper. The rotor actually is just a 200 mil Avid rotor right now, but I have some 220 mil rotors to go on this e-bike beast just for the pure stopping power. And the caliper here is a trick. The gold bolts on it. The front brake looks also quite epic. What do you think? What do you think of these brakes, Bear? You approve? So I guess another thing that's worth pointing out on these titanium brakes as well is that the pistons are bigger all around on the brakes. So this has four 17 mil pistons per brake, whereas the LH4 has two 17 mil and two 14 mil pistons. So you're essentially getting more stopping power per brake per set. If you are someone who doesn't want to compromise on power and you want the absolute best from your brakes, there is no better option. All the titanium hardware, in there i've got metallic pads on these these brakes have been great so far on the e-bike i've never felt like i need more power so let's quickly talk about the price of these brakes just to give you a bit of an idea of what you'd be paying for them lh4s 335 per set front and rear lh titaniums looking at around 480 pound a set i will put all the links in the description below if you want to go and check them out on submission cycles which is the uk distributor for the brakes what's my personal opinion on these brakes um, cause I've obviously tested both on the e-bike and the normal bike. I don't want to say here that titanium brakes are uh, better in terms of like overall performance cause they're both incredible brakes. But if you're somebody who is looking for a brake and doesn't want to compromise on performance, power, everything essentially, then I would look at the titanium brakes. But that's not to say that the LH4s are a downgrade at all. They're just a different material. Yeah, sure, they're a little bit less expensive. Lewis has like 17 years CNC experience. The quality across both of these brakes with these products is insane. And you'll know that as soon as you open the box and you feel them for yourself. It just oozes quality. It feels amazing to use. I've managed to set these brakes up exactly how I want the brakes and I'm happy with them. You guys know on this channel, I'll only share things that I would use and recommend. And all I'm doing here is sharing my experience with these brakes so far, how I've set them up, the bleeding process, the riding characteristics, the performance, what it's like to get accessories, which is another point to touch on, because people have been asking, what are these brakes like for getting spares for? If I, if I have a break a lever, if I need a spare rotors, spare pads, what we like to get spares for? Um, and we're gonna have to wait for weeks from China to get them. No, everything, if you're in the UK anyway, is in stock in submission cycles. And these guys will go above and beyond as well for, helping you out. The support has been incredible for me so far. They also run on mineral oil, which is something I forgot to mention. So anyone asking if it's on dot fluid or mineral, or mineral. If you've got any questions on the brakes that I didn't answer in this one, please pop them below. I'll get back to you and look forward to seeing the next video. Take care.